Alrighto, welcome back. This is episode 3 of my amateur's guide to Clockwork Empires. Uh, so what happened between episodes 2 and 3? Well, I saved the game, and then I reloaded the game. Uh, unfortunately, saving is a little bit buggy at the moment. Having saved a game, I can no longer renovate uh, workshops. I'll show you with this uh, ceramics workshop we built not so long ago. See this? It's all black. Can't place items in here. Uh, so it's just a little bit buggy. Uh, they're aware of it. Uh, Gas Lab Games devs are pretty good about that stuff. They're on it. Uh, another thing that stops working when you load a saved game... Uh, I guess you can't see it, but I'm clicking on this stockpile, but I can't bring up the stockpile filters. So it'll continue operating in the usual manner. Uh, it'll continue operating correctly. Um, but I can't change the filters anymore. Well, no big deal. On we go. We had a fugitive from justice last time. Where did he get? Huh. Looks like a buried corpse has... Uh, this is just full of bugs, isn't it? One of our buried corpses has become unburied. Aha! Leland Brazen Will Cowl. You cannot avoid the long arm of the law forever. So at the very start of this video, I don't know if you guys saw it, in the bottom right here I had an icon for a supply drop, which I didn't click on in time because I didn't notice it. Uh, so unfortunately what has happened is I missed that supply drop altogether. I didn't get anything. Now if you're paying attention during earlier supply drops, you have the option to pick one of three types of supplies or pick nothing. And if you pick nothing and tell the Empire, I'm cool, uh, you know, don't need to send me stuff, you'll actually get a prestige point, which is this star icon up at the top. Um, unfortunately, having missed the supply drop entirely, I don't even get that. So what does prestige do, I hear you ask? Well, uh, at the moment, nothing. In future, uh, it's been implied that having higher prestige means you'll get better drops. Uh, you'll, you, you get the same selection of uh, supplies from the Empire, but they'll be in greater quantities, which is cool. So you can demonstrate the Empire that you don't need their help. They'll be more willing to give you their help. Uh, so, how is life in the colony? Cooks are cooking doing for planks. I've got some planks, so I don't need to make any in the carpentry workshop here. Bunkhouse uh, is not full, so we don't need any more beds. Don't have a crew assigned making bricks, but we don't really need bricks right now. And the refinery is ready to go, so I think we can go mine some ore, and maybe we can uh, smelt it. Look at this hematite node, that's uh, this giant hematite boulder in my wheat field mine surface nodes here. Oh, and I actually clicked this coal node. Oh, we've actually got some hematite and coal in here. Or er, hematite and malachite. Malachite is what gets turned into copper ore. So, let's say... How many of these do I have? Five copper. And five hematite. Or, er, to be turned into iron. So, um, somebody mentioned to me that I had not used the explore function at all, uh, which is true. Let me pause for a second. If you look in the bottom left here, you'll see amongst your commands, you'll see, well, amongst your various commands, you'll see this one. And the only item in this menu is the command, uh, the explore command. Left click this, it gives me a beacon, which I can place anywhere. Uh, let's stick it over here. What will happen is that one of my colonist explorers, um, these guys, these men and women in the goggles and blue shirts are explorers. I have only one explorer. They will wander over to the explorer beacon. And as they wander over there, uh, fog of war gets uncovered. 
You can place multiple Explore Beacons if you like, and an Explorer will path between the two of them. You can stick an Explore Beacon... I realize this kind of sucks because you can't see my mouse cursor. Uh, trust me, I am clicking to place an Explore Beacon in the Black Fog of War. And an Explorer will walk to all valid Explore points. Oh, here we are now. Intrepid Explorer, Rowena Patterson. She seems a happy lady. She has made friends with herself. Twice. This seems to be a recurring bug. But she's well fed and she's well rested. And uh, that's all we're really concerned about. So, you can use your explorer to uncover areas with Fog of War. Um, otherwise, an explorer will do nothing. That is to say, if you don't give them explore tasks or explore beacons to go visit, they won't do um, they won't do workshop jobs. They don't join work crews. They just hang around in the middle of town. Now, hanging around in town is cool because they will still do hauling jobs. So they'll haul loose goods, like they'll fetch goods to the stockpile, and they'll do farming. But you may as well make use of them. They're not doing anything else, right? You may as well make use of them. Uh, expand the stockpile a little bit. Well, the stockpile will be pretty full. This is a new stockpile, so I am still able to control its filters. Alright, um... Nobody seems to be smelting anything. What is going on here? So the workshop has been cleaned by Mrs. Flood and her industrious sprockets. Uh, let's find her crew. What are you guys doing? Well, you're on the job. Oh, there's this Mrs. Flood now. But she's not smelting. Ah, here's one of her work crews. The Doty Hiram. Hiram Bronze Crimble Ride. And you can see him smelting hematite into iron... Uh, iron ingots. Or, sorry, not iron ingots. I was right the first time. Iron ingots. The reason I'm getting confused is because you can later make steel. But steel, as we know, is an alloy of iron and charcoal, in this case, or iron and coal, uh, which is another step in the process, and you need steel for other stuff. Uh, let's take a look at... Uh, so we have a wave of immigrants. Why is this crew so empty? What's going on? Oh, that's right. The guy we executed was in this crew. So this crew is short of workers. Um, I'm going to take three of anyone. Okay, sometimes stuff like this happens, and people ask, I wanted three people. Why? How come I only got one? And by the way, I'm going to put this guy in here. And the reason that happens is because only workers and overseers will show up in your work crew's um, pain. Not all your immigrants are eligible to show up here. You look at the top, you'll see another button here, Colonists. You can show all your colonists in a giant list, or your lower class, middle class, or upper class colonists. And it looks like at least one of our immigrants was upper class aristocrat Thaddeus Crimblecotter. Where is he? Let's take a look at this guy. Thaddeus is hanging around at his door. So he's an aristocrat and an upper class colonist. And common, a common thing uh, amongst all upper-class colonists is that they do no work. Uh, I don't know if there's a commentary on society here. Oh, and it looks like one of our other colonists, our third colonist was uh, one of these explorers. This is Rowena, who we saw earlier. This is explorer number two, Rooster Will. So these two guys came over on the boat together, and they're just hanging out, having a conversation. Generally speaking, explorers are middle-class, and most of your overseers will be middle-class uh, colonists. And you'll occasionally get upper-class colonists. So upper-class colonists never join work crews, never do workshop jobs. They will do the generic um, farming and hauling, however. 
so just like uh, just like in real life, our aristocratic class is mainly a burden on the smooth functioning of our colony. Later in development, uh, aristocrats are intended to increase the prestige of your colony. So they will eventually have a function. Um, just not right now. But they do have snazzy duds. Look at that. Stylish red cravat, white gloves, pinstripe long, uh, long coat. I like the cut of your jib, sir. So, the colony continues apace. Uh, I think we're in... Um, probably a good position to build something else. Let's see, last we built a refinery, now I'm going to build a metalworks. Uh, stick it over here. So metalworks will allow us to work our metal ingots. To, uh, most commonly copper and iron early in the game into uh, components. Things like plates and pipes. And now we have a self-sustaining colony. You may ask, why did I build it in this weird Z shape? Um, why not? To make anything out of metal, we need a smithing forge. Before I put that down, so smithing forge needs one iron sheet and three bricks. So I'm going to check what we have in store, but more than enough bricks, more than enough iron plates. No problem. Uh, so, let's put in that forge. In fact, let's put in two forges, just so two people can be working simultaneously. Uh, another optional piece of furniture is a standing desk here. It doesn't do anything at the moment. Um, it wants to be a nice forge. Let's put in some furniture. There's a wide variety of furniture. Most of it has no function beyond uh, the purely aesthetic. Let's stick a window back here. They will eventually uh, contribute to a colonist's satisfaction, but not at the moment. So, construction on the metalworks has begun. See that? Bottom right. Cult activity. It's an indication that the overall cult power of my colony has increased. What it means is that there's at least one person who's been spreading cult talk. In this case, possibly two. Uh, Minerva Bronze Mudlock seems fine, but her commanding officer, Shelby Golden Whistle, Actually, he's just been talking about cults. Uh, I am a little concerned I'm getting repeated cult activity warnings, though. What about you, citizen? Oh, no. Nope, that's fine. My aristocrat is not spreading uh, cultish thoughts. Take a look at you, Rooster Will. I've got my eye on you. Yeah, I don't know. I can't find the cultist subver subversives. I hope this doesn't become a problem later. But it probably will. Let's see. Uh, the kitchen's not cooking anything. Let's keep those guys busy. I've got some wheat, and I've got some... Oh, wait a second. I've got an incoming fish person attack. Ten raiders! Uh-oh, uh-oh, let's see. Ten fishmen incoming. Oh! Supply... Okay, it's getting big hectic. I'm gonna pause the game. Supply drop. Uh, guns, I want lots of guns. I've got fish people incoming. I've got ten fishmen raiders incoming. Game is currently paused. Now I've got six soldiers. I'm concerned they won't be enough to fight off the raiders. So I'm going to temporarily conscript Mrs. Ribbits Lee's temperate presses as militia. See this conscript button unit? Bam. Three more militia. Now one problem with uh, conscripting militia in this manner is that it makes your non-soldiers terribly unhappy. See this? Ridicore horse crow? 
horse crope. Uh, he's forcibly conscripted, and he's not happy about it. If you do this too often, um, well, most of their memories will be angry memories. That makes them inefficient colonists. Oh, we're fighting in the town square. Where are my soldiers? Shelby Golden Whistle, you have a gun. Um, oh, they're at the ramparts. Oh my goodness. Gadolphus Bronze Endersley is in trouble. Someone has been beaten to death by a new. Oh dear. Ivor Sander has been bludgeoned to death by a fish person. Um, and at least one other soldier. Fishmen also like to stamp on crops. That's what this morning over here. This guy was treading on my cabbages. Another soldier has run out of bullets. But he's still chasing a fishman. Brave, brave fool. Well, I hope my nine soldiers and militia can fend off this wave of fishmen. Oh dear. See, these fishmen have some of my colonists on the run. So, one of the things I do enjoy about Clockwork Empires is that there's relatively little micromanagement. I can, I can be relatively confident that given enough soldiers, I can fend off a fishman invasion. I've got some corpses, I took some losses in there, but I think uh, the invasion is over. Or not. Oh dear. Uh, this man is not a soldier. It is very, very unlikely he will stop to fight, and in any case, this fishman has a knife. This man is going to keep running, and this fishman is going to keep chasing him. If he doesn't die, uh, this pursuit can continue all the way to the edge of the map. He will literally run to the ends of the earth. And, um, oh dear. A fishman just slaughtered. Can't click, there we go. The Yola Iron Walker Wick. Well, we took some losses, uh, less to be expected. Life on the frontier is harsh. Oh dear, and Millard Brizencog. Died far, far from home. So, we've got some dead people. Um, another little thing that's slightly buggy in the, inter in the interface is that dead people will stay assigned to work crews unless their bodies have been turned into raw meat by fishmen. Ah, invaders keep interrupting my explanations. But good thing, we have a new wave of immigrants to replace our losses. Uh, take three of anyone. And another wave of fishmen. Well, this one's only three. I think the colony can handle itself. Let's get these guys assigned. I think these guys my impromptu militia, I'm actually going to retire them and turn back into regular workers. I think. There we go. And we still have, uh, hmm, I think we should be okay. One thing I don't like having to do after taking fatalities is, I'm going to pause the game here is to go through my list of colonists and weed out the dead ones. Uh, because sometimes doing things with a, <laughs> with a crew that contains dead colonists can crash your game. But not in this case. Maybe they clean that code up. All is well. well I say all is well. I mean, they're still fighting on the edges of town. Oh, look at this. Cultists have built an ominous shrine. You know those cult warnings I was getting earlier? This is another worrying sign. 
cultists, or colonists who are cultists, will actually take your harvested resources, uh, in this case logs and stone blocks, and wander out into the woods and build these things. If you allow cult activity to continue unchecked, um, they will go to these shrines and worship there, and then they will return to town and initiate a murder spree, which is not good for anyone. And it gets worse from there. Again, cultists, not good for your town. Right. So the colonists um, will bury their own corpses. You will probably see a couple of burial jobs here. But we have fishman corpses strewn all about town. And oh dear. Well, is these two fine soldiers uh, were able to avenge Hiram Bronze Crimblewright. Fine son of Albion. He ran a long, long way. So what do I do with fishman corpses littering town? Allow me to demonstrate. Select. Oh, butcher fish people. I'm going to render all of them up into raw fish person steak, which the kitchen can turn into cooked fish, uh, cooked fish person steak, which we can eventually use in fish pie. We don't seem to have any cooked. Oh, that's right. Our cooking job uh, was interrupted by two waves of fishmen. Fair enough, time to queue up some more cooking jobs. Plenty of lingon berries. Oh my goodness, 21 raw first per fish person steaks, eh? Let's queue up some of those. Cabbage. Actually, let's make some pie. We have all the ingredients we need for pie. These. Ooh, there we go. And after we're done the pie, then we can make cabbage and steak. Is this lady dead? I guess that answers that. Well, um, we've survived two waves of fish people. We've got some uh, ores, actually. We've got some refined ores. Let's assign a squad into here. Mr. Boffin, you will be responsible for making me some, let's say, two plates, two pipes, and two iron plates. There we go. Our graveyard is filling up. I think we're still on pretty firm footing. The colony is growing nicely. I'm trying to keep these things down in length a little bit. Uh, because they're a pain in the ass to uh, encode when they're like 15 gigs big. So I'm going to cut it off here. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this has been informative. My name's Alfred. Again, I can be found on the Gaslamp Games official forums. You might catch me in the Steam discussion pages. Great. Um, have a good one.